Hello everybody and welcome to the first round World Cup matchup between El Kalak 75 and Ever. Uh, get the ref there, that will that will I don't know, that will probably favour the dwarves won't it, seeing as they have fixed gold guys. Fuck you little cunt! Fuck <laughs> off! <laughs> Thanks Lechthenian for that. Um, right, so looking let's look at the teams. First of all, Ever's human team. Um, he's gone with a kind of standard build of Mighty Blow Tackle, 3 Guard and Block on the Ogre. He has 13 players and doesn't have an Apple. I, I think I prefer 12 players and an Apple. But um, there you go. And he's got he's he's played quite a lot of Champs Ladder, o over 200 games of Champs Ladder. Only has a win rate of 54%. Um, but he's just got a Kaz there with that block. Pretty good. And uh, he qualified, he was one of the two people who qualified through the Pietro di Minotauro League. Um, El Calac 75's Dwarves, he, I, I like his build more with guard on the uh, blitzers than some of the other ones we've seen. He's got the second runner, he's got two runners, two, two slayers. The block's okay against Wood Elves, but um, he'd probably rather have an extra guard in this matchup, wouldn't he? And again, he doesn't have an apple. And he's got a 69% win rate in Champs Ladder, and he won the Polish BB Community League to qualify. So there you go. So already, huge, huge look from the humans, isn't it? Removing, removing a dwarf. So yeah, obviously Mighty Blow Blitz there. So yeah, in interesting. I think, obviously, the racial matchup favours Dwarves, I think, at low TV. But humans getting the extra skills, I think, kind of swings it over towards the humans a bit. They don't outguard them. But they do out mighty blow them, and they do out strength them. So they got they got two mighty blow to none. So uh, yeah, it's interesting. He does have the reserve runner. It's good that he's got the reserve runner. I think it's good anyway. So yeah, dwarf. So yeah, I like this from a double troll slayer dwarf team. Just stay in the middle like this, make the make the center really hard to break through, and that encourages people to go to one of the sides. And then you might get, you know, they've got to protect against the surf or get surfed to make any progress. Um, I'm surprised, you know, that some other people haven't done that. But yeah, kind of, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? As dwarves, keep the center really strong. And then when they push down a side, hopefully you can slam the door shut and maybe get a serve. So yes, I like that screen over there. And you know, he's he's not in any rush to score the humans, but it's going to be tricky. You know, when the humans have to push. How they're going to do it because tackle on their catches makes the catches a bit crap without allegedly three. So it, it's not easy for humans at all. I just think they're, they, you know, they're better than normal because they should be. They could be out guarding the good bash teams. They're going to have something over the bash teams. They're either going to have more mighty blow than them or more guard than them. Or both. <laughs> And they're going to have more movement than all the bash teams, but movement without agility is not really that helpful, is it? I think that's the hardest thing to get the advantage from in, in a Blood Bowl game. I think, you know, Wood Elves, Wood Elves have all the movement and agility for to back it up, whereas humans with only movement, it's not always, 
that much of a strength. You know, if you can't if you can't dodge a way to use it. Yeah, this this is the build that I expected people to go with the three guards, a mighty bow tackler and a block ogre. But I I kind of don't like the block ogre. I would, I think I would just want more more guard if I was the humans. I like guard. <laughs> Looks like he's going to get the foul in here, thanks to the uh, bribe. And get the ref. Does nothing. But at least he doesn't get sent off. waddling around. I quite, I quite like the way... This could be a surf here, couldn't it? Three dice, two dice surf, but then it's turn five, so... He can't... If he goes for that, he'll probably not score. He's got to work some, some way to get forward, hasn't he, this turn? I guess he's going to get the catcher over here. Whoa, no! <laughs> he's just going he's just going for it. Wow. Okay. Okay. So I guess the plan is push here. Oh. I thought he was pushed here and then got this guy around as another scoring threat. I think if you just got one kind of scoring threat forward like that, you know, he's just gonna get blitzed down and then um shore it up, isn't he? Whereas maybe if he'd done that block and pushed him to there, he could have run around and had two scoring threats, maybe. There isn't it hitting the uh, hitting the catcher. Yep, frenzy on the other one. Wow, rerolls. You know, he's only got two more turns of defense because turn eight isn't a defensive turn. So really, he did have three rerolls for three turns. So that's absolutely absolutely correct to use a reroll there, in my opinion. Yeah, he left him back as well. I quite like that. That's pretty solid. He's going for this surf, but I said it means he won't score. But he did it over two turns, but it seems really, really tough to score now, doesn't it? I mean, he could have gone for that surf the other, the other turn, I guess. But it's really tricky for him to score now, isn't it? Very tricky. got a cage but that's a that's a GFI to score the throw a GFI to score the thrower or it's a pass or a handoff to this catcher isn't it? GFI to get punched is an interesting strategy. I mean obviously he's basing them to, so that they can't get back. I would have just hit him with a runner I think and uh, he used the blitz over this side maybe. But doesn't make me right and him wrong. <laughs> he wanted to get the. I mean, you know, it's fair enough. He wanted to get the runner over this side. That's that's fair because he does have to get stuff in the way here. Absolutely. That's the problem with dwarves, isn't it? Now they're down. They're down nine players. It's hard for them to cover everywhere. Maybe he overcommitted a little bit the other side. Over pursued a little bit. Yeah, I don't 
Don't mind the one dice becoming two rerolls. It's still tricky for the humans, isn't it? A lot of players down. And still needing a GFI to score. But there's a bit of space here, isn't there now? Especially with the POW. But even, even a push, you could have pushed him there and gone through a bit here. This looks to be a pass, doesn't it? That is ballsy. Wow. That was a 5 plus pass because of the air. Uh, <laughs> because of the very sunny. Wow. Um, wow, that's interesting, isn't it? It's just a 4 plus to, to, get, to get frenzy hits on him as well. Ballsy. I think maybe catcher here might have been better. But then I guess he could have uphilled him and to get a hit from him. Or some, or maybe here. Here. Maybe this would have been a better spot for the catcher. And then it would have just been a 4 plus pass. Or double G if I handle. I really don't like having to do a 5 plus pass there. Wow. So you're doing all the irrelevant blocks. I'm not sure if I would have made all of these, like, you know, they are attrition blocks. But I think I would have really wanted my re-roll for the uh, 4 plus dodge. Did you not re-roll it? You just didn't re-roll it. What the hell? <laughs> Misclick or something? You rolled a dub skull on the first block. Ah, thank you. Sorry. Sorry for that. So there you go. So he did do... He did do pointless blocks in the, <laughs> and rolled double skull. All right. Everyone everyone in the chat knew. But I didn't see that. Um, it did seem bizarre that he didn't use a reroll. So there you go. So just as I was criticising for making all of these pointless blocks, <laughs> he had used a reroll on them. And now, yes, you can look at it the way that if you roll a double one, you would have failed the dodge. But I think... You know, making all these blocks does give you 1 in 36 chances to use your reroll. So realistically, you shouldn't do them if it's something as critical as hitting the ball. Dodging first gives you the best chance to stop the touchdown. But I understand that he, you know, he wants to do the attrition blocks because he probably won't have to use his reroll on them. So I can understand, you know, it's not it's not it's not definitely better to to do the dodge first. But it definitely gives you the better chance of stopping the score, doesn't it? That doesn't mean that it's the it's definitely the best move. Um, but I would have <laughs> I would have gone straight for the dodge. And I guess the humans had a reroll, so it stops you taking blocks back as well. <laughs> Crazy pitch invasion actually saves the humans from getting punched. Um, that saves them two armor rolls, really, and. And that's all it achieves. It actually helps the dwarves. Obviously, big gang foul now because he's got the bribe. I mean, doesn't I, I wouldn't do this. I, I, obviously, he's doing it, but I don't think he should. And I'll tell you for why. <laughs> if he gets caught, he uh, he uses his bribe or he loses a player. He's he's already had a guy cast. So if he gets caught, he has to use his bribe. And if he kills him, so what? He's got two subs. So that I think that was a very bad foul um, to make. I, I would save my fouls for the second half. Save, you know, definitely have my bribe for the second half. You could have, you know, you could be making eight fouls potentially in the second half, like seven fouls um, that you could have just lost out on by making that one foul there. So I think, I think that was a, I think that was, a, in my opinion, it was a bad foul. Of course, he could have, it was high risk, high reward, wasn't it? So he, he could have just made a cas, and then he couldn't have benched a thrower and a catcher. <laughs> I 
<laughs> yeah, I did. I did miss that double skull, but you know, I got it in spirit. It's not. It's not easy. You know, it's it's, and it's really not easy for them playing, as I say all the time. You know, it's not. It, these aren't brutal criticisms. They're just. Uh, they're just observations and thoughts. <laughs> Blitz, huge blitz, absolutely huge. He has done the uh, Shawnee setup of um, two back in. Well, Shawnee had two guys off the LOS. He's got two guys off the LOS, and it's let him stand on the ball. If he had a guy here and a guy here, he would have still been getting through, but it would have been taken him. A, it would have been a lot harder. This way, he's got two guards either side of the catcher and that is absolutely brutal for the dwarves isn't it I think one two three four five six seven it might have been a GFI with that guy to get the guy oh, no, then you can chain him away so no that, that's good he had to put everyone on to stop freeing this guard but he could still free the guard because he's got guard so he can make two two D's and a one D to free the guard Get the guard in, uh, blitz him, and then two dice into two dice is 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 what I expected, especially after he makes these two blocks. But I did not expect this because now he can't he can't recover, can he? He's used both. Uh, he's used both runners so there's no recovery for him whatsoever whereas if you had done it my way <laughs> which was admittedly would have taken a one dice block he hit the blitzer there as well rather than this guy then the, the catcher could have gone there and uh, the catcher the guard could have gone there and then he would have had a guy free to to recover but this way he's got the guard free to double GFI which you know, so it's it's pros and cons. It's not it's not. It wasn't just it wasn't. You know, maybe if you could have some kind of super computer, super computer AI, you could say which of those, you know, things was the mathematically correct way of doing it. I like my way. He liked his way. It doesn't make either of us wrong, does it? It just is what it is. Yeah, this is uh, not so good for the humans now, is it? it? It started off amazing for them, and now he's definitely recovered well. He's definitely done well to recover the dwarf coach. Old Kalak. I guess the stun helps. The stun was pretty huge in these GFIs. If he hadn't been stunned, and if he hadn't, if he'd filled one of those GFIs, he would have been off. <laughs> But it's still it's still tricky every turn for the dwarves here. I would have I would have fancied the dodge there as well because he can double GFI to get there. But I think I would have liked the double GFI to get in here so the Troll Slayer could hit. But his way was safer, obviously. Again, pros and cons. Yeah, to be fair, as Miraz Kadu says, my way, if the 1D fails, it lets the humans have the ball in their hands. So maybe that's what he thought. Maybe he thought of doing it my way. And you know, it's easy to, to watch and say, I've done the one dice there, but maybe if that happened to me in the game, I might think, oh, it's too risky and not do it, you know? So, so it is, it's, it's a bit different watching as, as when you're playing, for sure. This is, this is very tricky for the dwarves now.
How do you, how do you, he had to do this block. Because if he didn't do this block, he could have got surfed easily. So, he had to do it, but he got, he got the stun out of it as well as the power. And I think this is a, actually a pretty great turn by El Kalak here, because I was looking at this and I thought, no matter where you go, with these two here, and this guy, and these guys, that you know, I just thought, he's got, he's got five players punched up in the middle, you know, which is, which is horrible. Horrible, these five guys all together. Fighting, although it's fighting five, the humans can get out of it, can't they? And the dwarves can't. Um, it helped that this was a catcher, <laughs> so we could get a two dice block there. But I thought that was a, I thought this was a really good, really good play from El Kalak here to, to get out of this, to keep the ball safe on this turn. I thought was really hard, and I didn't see a, a really a way of doing it very well, and uh, he he did. That's pretty. That's pretty much as safe as you could possibly make it. I think. Nice removal there with Mighty Blow. Was it? Was it Mighty Blow that did it? Yes, it was. Wow, did he just one in nine and didn't re-roll it? He's only got one re-roll left, the human, the humans ever only has one re-roll, so he had to eat that. There were safe moves to be made there, weren't there? Two players he could have stood up before making that block. So, you know, maybe he should have done some safe moves then. <laughs> Um, and this is this is tricky. So he, he could go up there, thanks to him not being stood up. But it's just it's just tough because he's got all these guys tied up. And how does he even get there with him? This is a thing. He's kind of, in a way, he's over. It helps. It helps that nearly the whole human team is on the ground. But in a way, he's overcommitted by going that far because he's out. He's outrun the rest of his team of support, hasn't he? Pretty much all. Cheeky cars. Like and it's not. And this is the thing. So if if humans, if it goes a bit bad for them, they've just got agility three to to kind of cope, haven't they? Which isn't really good. He's going to blitz and get the ogre in there. Blitz, blitz him off, and maybe he's just move around. Pretty unlucky bonehead there. But uh, a cheeky stun. And yeah, so it turns to the dwarves, and obviously they've got an easy blitz here. And they can now look how much movement this dwarf's got. He can hit one, two, three, four, five, six, and get anywhere he wants. Maybe here. And he doesn't, for some reason, known only to El Kalak. <laughs> he does not go there, he just goes here. And I don't know why, he had more squares left. He could have been here, and as we'll see later, <laughs> that could be a critical mistake. I think that was a mistake. I, I think he absolutely should have been there, and I don't know why he didn't go there. Double skull there, that's a bit unlucky. Maybe he shouldn't have even made the block, though. There's an argument for not making that block, isn't there? So this screen is only made with him and him. So if he can knock over this this troll slayer, or even push him, both human, both linos, 
have a clean path to go around because this this runner is stood in the wrong square. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not hating on El Kalak, but uh, that was definitely, I mean, I think that's unarguably was a mistake there. And like it's still, you know, it would have been a few dodges. It would have been a lot of dodges, wouldn't it, if he hadn't been there? I mean, one, two. two. Two dodges and then two dodges from him as well. But as it is, it's no dodges. And he gets the power with a reroll. Uses his last reroll to get that power. Ball into the crowd. <laughs> right, right in the middle of the pitch. <laughs> so that's that's looking really grim for the dwarf now, isn't it? I would, I think, I would have just gone for the pickup with uh, with one of these two blitzers. I think I would have, you know, hit the uh, hit the blitzer with one of them, and then uh, I guess this guy he blitz and then go for the pickup with this one. I think I would have gone for the pickup with the uh, with the blitzer. Attempt to pick up with a blitzer, and have the runners, you know, have it, have this runner as a kind of scoring threat. But um, Elkalak elected to go for the sure hands pick up, and a GFI backwards. Which is fair because the you could have you could have blocked away the. Uh, Troll for uh, troll slayer for two dice, and I think I think here ever could have maybe kept two guys on the on the runner there because that that gives him a bit of an that that's the only guy he's got in realistic scoring range. This run needs a minimum two two GFIs to score, almost certainly three GFIs to score. So I, I would have maybe kept two guys up there, but you know I can see why he didn't. I'm not calling him wrong. That's just a that's just an option, you know. Yeah, he still has the bribe, doesn't he? Both both coaches still have the bribe, so yeah, maybe he should have probably at least fouled him there. <laughs> So he, he just goes for the kind of potato here, and it actually works out quite well for him. Um, potato, if you're not if you're not up on Blood Bowl two memes, is a, is a kind of unprotected run forward. And it's pretty unprotected here. Now the move he makes though, oh, us us Blood Bowl pros have a saying about standing on the sideline. Do it sometimes. And that was not that was not the time to stand on the sideline. I, I would have thought long and hard about whether to make the extra GFI and basing him like that. I think it would have been okay for the runner to be there, but you can't go on the sideline. You cannot go on the sideline there. Even with no rerolls for the humans, this sideline play is is suicidal. Just had to make two two dice blocks, and then a three plus. Brutal. I think, seeing as he only has one scoring threat, I think the play was actually just to base the ball with a catcher, because if you don't surf this guy. Like, if you surf him, you've won. If you don't surf him, you've turned over. And if you fail that pickup, then he's still got a scoring threat, hasn't he? So I think I would have just based the ball with the catcher and then uh, and then gone for the surf. So, like, you know, to guard against failure. I mean, it wasn't wrong to pick it up, but winning 2-0 doesn't, doesn't mean anything. So... I think I would have. I think I would have just. I think basing was the correct play there, but you know, bit of bit of Russia blood there, and you know he's. Uh, it's fair enough. So 
yeah, that was a couple really of, of you've got to call them errors and uh, by by El Kalak there, the, the, the screen that wasn't wide enough and then that sideline uh, stand. I mean, to be fair, if the humans had rolled a one or a two, it would have been, well, if they'd rolled a one, <laughs> a two would have still popped the ball loose. But I just think, I just think the ball should have been, the, you know, the ball carry should have been here so he couldn't have been served. I think he made it way too easy to serve the carry. But you know, again, there's there's a lot of pressure, and he had done some he did some really really good moves in that game, um, Al Kalak. But then, yeah, maybe a couple, maybe a couple of critical errors in the end. But you know, it's every you know it is tough for everybody, and you know everyone everyone who wins, you know, fair play to them, well played both sides. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.